Hey everyone, it's Duke here again. So I hope that you enjoyed the last video. I hope I also hope that you enjoyed the introduction to the how to view interactive interactive social networking app course. And I hope that you would join that course with me also. So now back to text. So here is our very simple UI so far. And I want to um the next thing I want to do, I want to create a class for this table view. And but before doing that, I want to change the title of this, maybe into something like text. Okay. And then next I want to create a class for this UI table views um, controller. So let's create a file, new file. So for this, it is iOS source called, called touch class. And the subclass should be UI table view controller. And then I will select that one. And then I will name this tweet table view controller because this is a table of tweets. So I will next and then create. Okay. So, so now we don't need this view controller anymore. So move to trash. Okay. And then next I want to assign this class to be a class of tweet table view controller. Okay. You go to the identity inspector and then go to the tweet table view controller. All right. So let's go to the tweet table view controller and do some cleaning up right now. And we don't need the, the receive memory warning. This one is fine, but I want to change this from table view data source into UI table view data source. Just my habit. And also I want to have a mark here called view controller life cycle. And in case you wonder what is this mark and what it does is it will have a very nice dashed line and then the very um, distinctive um, mark right here. So it will organize your code very nice. Okay. And for this one, we just need the number of sections in table view. And again, if you are not familiar with UI table view, check out the t all things UI table view course. In that course, I will teach you all the things you will need to do in your app to use a UI table view. Things like to create a table view, how to have a table view in other views, meaning that you have a table view and other views in the view. Okay. And you can do like things, fancy things like custom table view cell from ground up. You have animate, yeah, you are a table view cells, things like that. But in this one, we will go over this very quickly. And we also need the self overall index path, but we don't need those things. So I will delete those things and even the navigation also. So we just need the number of sections in table view. We also need the table view number of rows in section. We also need the self overall and index path. Okay, so let's jump right into how to fetch tweets from, from Twitter. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, maybe you would see that we can go over twitter.com, register for developer account, and do all kinds of um, requests, right? But does it like Twitter is a very, very famous, uh, very popular social networking site, right? So thousands and thousands of people already did already solve our problem in iOS. So why don't we use some of those? What I mean is why don't we use some open source project to already do that? So we just want to demonstrate how to use um, this. So what I do is I prepare for you a class of various uh, some some of the help class for this. So I prepare for you a Twitter um, helper classes. Those classes are for you to use in this project. It will allow, it will grab around all kinds of crazy stuff about fetching data from a URL from um, Twitter. Okay. Okay. And then all we need to do is to use this class to fetch data from Twitter and consider about things like um, the user interface, things like that in the iOS that we want to focus on. Okay, so we'll drag out this Twitter class, Twitter helper class, like that. And then when you download that, just drag out the whole folder of that. 
and then don't forget to click into copy items if needed and then the edit folder is create grouped well if you don't select the copy items if needed then it is just have a reference to the current location of your folder in the system file in your Mac if you move this um, project into somewhere else then the project will crash it doesn't know what is the reference okay so and then finish okay so then we have this Twitter and in this Twitter helper classes we have some things like media items which is things like uh, the text, the URL, the descriptions. We have Twitter keys. We also have a tweets class. This tweets class wrap around the text, the user. We have the created, which is an NS date. We have an ID media. Maybe I want to increase the size of the font like that. Okay, I hope that you see that. And then you see that we have the user mentions, things that, things like that. And you, you see on the top, this class, these Twitter um, helper classes are created by a professor at Stanford University. And so it means that this class is very uh, carefully crafted and it is tested very well against uh, a bunch of people, right? And this class was um, written in Swift 1.0, but I changed it into Swift, Swift 1.2, which is the current version of Swift right now. So, okay, so it just requires some of the other work to change from Swift 1.0 to Swift 1.2, but overall, the code is very stable, okay? That's the point. The point is if you can use any other people's code that is already written those things for you, use those code that are more stable, that require less uh, de development time, meaning that less debugging time, less bugs to find meaning your code is more stable okay and also we have a twitter request class so this twitter request class all have all the kinds of things about um, requesting from twitter we have um, a user class this user class is wraps around a user okay we have the profile image url we have the screen name we have the name the id things like that okay so let's jump right into our tweet table view controller and write some code to see some tweets, will we? Okay, so what, um, if you are, I don't want to say it again, but I hope that you are familiar with table view, UI table view. So a UI table view has a data source, which is the data that will populate, that we will populate, we will put into the table view. And we, it has a delegate, right? The delegate is something that, let's say we want to, we click into the cell, then the table view inform us, which is the delegate of the table view that the user already click into the table view cell, okay? So for the data source of this table view, we have an array of tweets, right? We want to display um, a table of tweets, so we will have an array of tweets. So now we will have var, tweets okay and this is an array of tweets okay and this is the tweet which is the tweet class just like this but you see that the problem is when we are dealing with right now we are dealing with dynamic data dynamic data from Twitter thousands and thousands of people continuously fetching data sending data to Twitter and we also continuously fetching data from Twitter so it means that right now we fetch data, but one second from now, <laughs> another tweet say now. We don't know about that, right? So what if we want to have our data very dynamic, we want to have a batches, some batches of tweets, meaning that we will fetch continuously some, a lot of tweets, right? So right here, I don't want to just have an array of tweets. I want to have an array of array of tweets. Okay, so each array inside here, this is this array is inside this array, is, each element is an array of tweets. Okay, each array of tweets is a batch of tweets. Okay, I hope that it makes sense to you because um, when you go to the um, dynamic data world and multi threading things like that, you have to think about that. What if things happen next? Right? 
Okay, what happened next? So next, I want to have a search text. So let's say I want to var search text, which is a string, okay, maybe a string like that. And by default, I want to have maybe my name, um, okay? You can search, you can put into your Twitter client uh, handler, which is here, this is the Twitter handler of yours, or anything you want to search for, okay? Right now, we just want to start with this tweet, this handler, okay? Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to have a Twitter request. So let's do, do that. Um, we have a var, and now, what is a Twitter request? As I say to you, we will have a batches, batches of tweets. So I want to have a successful request or last successful request. And I also want to have a next request, okay? So the, the Twitter handlers, the Twitter uh, helper classes provide us very wonderful way to have a last successful request and the next successful request. So I would do last successful Success full request, which is Twitter request. And then we have a var next request to attempt, meaning that we want to attempt another request to Twitter. So we'll do Twitter request. And this is um, optional, right? Now, in this, I will use something called an um, property observer, meaning that when we set something or I'm sorry, with this one, we will use this is a closure, okay? And so we will do if last successful request equal equals to nil, then it means that there is no last successful request. Then we will do something like if search text is not equals to nil, then we will return a Twitter request, okay? Return Twitter request and the search the search here is search text, okay? We have to ungrab that. And maybe the count, I want to count 100. We want to fetch 100 tweets from Twitter, okay? Now with this one, it means that if we don't have any successful, last successful request, and if the text, the text we want to search is not nil, then we want to have a next, uh, next request, okay? And then if the text is nil, then we just return nil. All right. Else with this one, if the last successful request is not nil, then else we want to return the last successful request and we want to request for newer tweet, tweets. So we'll do return last, last, uh, last successful request dot request for newer tweets, right? So request for newer. So over here, I want to ungrab that because I'm no, I know for sure that this is not nil anymore. So I want to ungrab that. Okay, we don't have to do optional training over here because this is never nil inside the else statement. Okay. So that's that. Next, I want to have. Um, I want to set. Um, I want to download some tweets. So let's do that. I will have to a function called fun refresh, refresh like that, okay? So for this refresh, I would do something like um, if let search text equals search text, because this search, search text is optional, string optional, because later on we will have a text field, right? And that text field may be nil. So for this, I will do if let request equals next request to attempt. Okay, so we have a request. It is a next request to attempt. And whenever we call this, it will call this block a closure, right? So inside here, we will fetch some tweets. And now, if we want to fetch some tweets, we have to consider we are going to the internet. And is it go is this going to block the main thread, the main thread? Because if you know that iOS has multiple threads, each thread meaning a queue of um of program um, requests. Each line of code here 
will be lined up in a queue. And what is the main main queue? The main queue is something that handles all the user interactions, meaning that when you touch in the uh, display, something will display, that is the main queue. Okay, so everything that does not ha doesn't have anything to do with the user interaction, that is must be off the main queue, or else the worst case is iOS system will kill your app. It has the potential to kill your app if your app blocks the main queue. Okay, so we want to be off the main queue if we want to fetch some uh, some tweets. Okay, so now I want to request dot fetch tweets and this fetch tweets it is luckily in this class this fetch tweet is off the main queue okay and what it returns is some new tweets so we do a new tweet inside here i just press enter and inside here is a closure in this closure is it returns a new tweet it has a parameter of new tweets and all we need to do now is to configure those tweets okay but remember that this fetch tweets class uh, function method is asynchronous. Asynchronous means that it happens along with your user interaction code. It is off the main queue. So I would do off the main queue. So this code is off the main queue. But now wh when we got back from this fetch request, now we successfully uh, load fetch some tweets some new tweets right so when we successfully get some new tweets we want to populate these tweets into the table view right and after we but the table view is the user interface and as I said to you 100% the user interface has to be in the main queue has to be in the main thread so what we need to do right now is we want to go back to the main queue. So we will do this patch async, okay? And here I would use this patch get main queue, all right? And then over here I will just press enter, and then I will have a closure. This closure is my UI code, okay? So do UI stuff here, okay? So now I want to check if the new tweet dot count is greater than zero, meaning that we have some new tweets, right? Then I want to change the self dot last successful request to be request, which is this one, okay? Which is we just have a new tweet, so this current request will be the last successful request, okay? And then next I want to have self dot tweets, which is our uh, batch batches of tweets then I want to insert that insert okay new tweet new tweet and well I want to insert these new tweets into the first index number is zero all right after we do that we want to reload the data the table view sell the table view dot reload data okay so just like that and I hope that you understand this we will have a request from the helper class and then we will fetch some tweets this method is written asynchronously meaning it is off the main queue but when we get back from that asyn asynchronous task we got some new tweets when we get some new tweets we want to populate those tweets we want to displace those new tweets into the table view into the table view but the table view the table view is our UI. So all the UI code has to be in the main queue. So we will put, we will return back to the main queue with the dispatch, async dispatch, get main queue. And inside this closure, we will do all the things we need to do with the table view. All right? Okay. So I think that's that. Now, next, I want to, in the view download, maybe I will delete those things. Okay, so in the view did load, I want to do some things like um, just refresh, okay? Because I want to download some tweets first. And then after we refresh, when the view did load, we refresh, then we want to 
populate those um, UI to view data source. So let's do that. So what are those? For the number of sections in table view, we want to do um, um, maybe just one. We want just one t section, right? And then we want to number of rows in section. We will do tweet subsection, okay? And then we will do dot count. So we have different section of the tweets and we dot count, okay? And then next, we want to do things like we want to configure this table view cell. So I will uncomment that one and make some space here. Okay, let's do that. So for this cell, I want to change this cell identifier. But let's be a good um, iOS developer here. I want to have a private struct, and this is storyboard. Okay storyboard and this storyboard I have static let's cell identifier okay maybe tweet cell identifier tweet cell identifier and this is tweet cell okay just like that and then now I want to configure this tweet so for this one we will do instead of a string we can use storyboard dot tweet cell identifier so that we have um, auto complete from Xcode right and it is a UI table view cell all right so next I want to have a tweet so let's do that let tweet equals tweet sub index path dot section okay and then index path dot row just like this what do we have here it's fine all right and then next I want to do things like uh, I want to configure this tweet right so I want to do configure this tweet and how are we going to do this now for the first version we are going to work on right now in this video I would just want to have the tweet text and I want to have the um, maybe the um, the name of the person that posting this tweet right so we're going to do tweet dot text label. Um, yeah, sound dot text label dot text equals, and that should be a string. And then we will use string interpolation right here. And then it should be tweet dot user. Okay. So this tweet dot user is an user. And then for because now why is it a user? Well, let's check this user class. Okay, so this user class is a user, and so go to the user. The user is a struct actually, and it is printable. What it means is it um, it writes here. Let me show you. Um, it writes the this description. Okay, it has a public var description, and that is this. Okay, it has the screen name and the name. Okay, so whenever we go into this, we interpolate this tweet.user, then it will immediately call the tweet.user.description. So by default, it should be tweet.user.description, but because we or they already did that, so we just need to tweet.user. Okay, in case you are wondering why we do that. All right, so next thing I want to do is I want to have the text, right? We want to text the text of the tweet and how are we going to do this we will need to do the text so let's do that we will have the sound dot text um, description I think so detail text label dot text question mark a text that should be tweet dot um, text okay so let's run this one and that should be good. Okay, so we have array index out range. 